Good afternoon, everyone. Why don't we greet each other by saying, "You are uh, fellow workers of the workers of God, works of God. You are the fellow workers for the works of God." Oh, this is a tongue twister. This is a tongue twister. Yeah. Yes, you guys are the fellow workers for the works of God. Yes, and before we begin, why don't we confess our confession of faith before God? Jesus Christ is, is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. All right, so today's title is to Build the Ark. It's not about the physical ark that we can see and touch. It is the spiritual ark that we need to build so that anybody who comes inside can be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. And may I truly pray all of you here become the main figures who will build the spiritual ark to save this uh, dying age and the field. So before we jump right into the main contents, uh, we would like to share with you uh, the message that was proclaimed last week. So from last pulpit message, it was the whole armor of God, and which was the platform for victory. And the greatest blessing that, that God has given to us is prayer. Prayer. And if you look at uh, John chapter 14, verse 14, Jesus even told his disciples, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Right? Prayer. The blessing of prayer is the greatest blessing that God has given to us besides the blessing of salvation. And if you look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, after Simon Peter confessed the greatest confession on earth, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus told him, I will give you the keys to the doors of the kingdom of heaven. Meaning, if you truly hold on to this name of Jesus Christ, and enjoy this in your prayer. You can actually move around the throne wherever you go. This is how great it is to have this blessing of prayer in your life. So those who have accepted Jesus Christ into their heart and use the name of Jesus Christ can move the throne with their prayer. So I want everyone, every single one of you here, truly enjoy the, the blessing of prayer that can Move around the throne in your respective fields. So prior to wearing the whole armor of God and fighting the spiritual fight, you must have the mystery of prayer. Mystery of prayer. Mystery is something that others cannot know. It is only you and God knows. right? So it is because those who pray are well aware of what is happening in the spiritual world. And those who are well aware of what is happening in the spiritual world can actually fight the spiritual fight. So before you fight the spiritual fight against your enemy, you must first open your spiritual eyes, go into deep prayer. Go into deep prayer. And that is why if you look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, Paul told the church of uh, Ephesus, that we need to pray in the Spirit on all occasions, on all occasions. Everything that happens in your life, every meeting that you have, every experience that you have, connect those to prayer. All right? Because that is how you can have victory in the spiritual battle against Satan. And what kind of prayers then you need to restore? First is you need to restore The three nine three prayer that I mentioned before, right? The first three mentions is meaning what? The triune God, right? May the triune God be upon myself. That is the greatest prayer. May the triune God, unseen to our eyes, is absolutely with every single one of you, right? And you are praying for that. And for nine, it is the blessing of the throne. May the blessing of the throne be upon myself. That is fundamentally restore your strength and the last three is everyone has the past everyone has the future and you need to pray may i receive the strength to change to really 
transform my past, my present, my future into the blessings. Yeah, those are the prayers that you need to first restore in order to fundamentally restore it. That is the first prayer. The reason why you need to restore this prayer is because you, in order to fight the spiritual battle, you need the fundamental strength. And that can be given by this 393 prayer. And the second prayer that you need to restore is continuous prayer. But pastor, how can I continuous pray? I need to eat, I need to sleep, I need to meet my friends, of course. What I mean by restoring the continuous prayer is connect everything to prayer. Everything you see, everything you hear, everything you experience, or everything you learn something, connect everything to prayer. Connect those to prayer. If you do so, instead of being caught up with your own thoughts, you will be able to find God's meaning. God's meaning in everything, whether good or bad. So, continuous prayer is finding God's meaning. Why is it crucial to, to find God's meaning in everything? It is because, like, the reason why you need to connect everything to prayer is that whenever you are caught up with your own anxieties and worries, that is when Satan attacks you. So according to 1 Peter chapter 9, chapter 5, verse 7 through 8, it says, Cast all your anxiety on Him, on Jesus Christ, because He cares for you. And be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. When does the Satan attack? When you are caught up with your anxieties worries and physical thinkings and negative thoughts that is when satan attacks you that is why you need to cast all your worries all your concerns upon who upon jesus christ who has finished everything on the cross that is when satan kneels down at the name of jesus christ amen may you truly restore this continuous prayer as you live the six days of this week and the third prayer that you need to restore is the deep prayer What I mean by restoring the deep prayer is instead of just letting each day pass by, you need to have the time of enjoying deep prayer to find answers that God has prepared for you. Answers. Right? As you leave a day, you might face certain problems, right? You might face some conflicts and crises in your daily lives. And instead of just letting those problems like pass by, you need to go into deep prayer by meditating on the Word and try to seek out the answers that God has already given to you from the pulpit. Right? That is why you come to worship. Why? To find the answers for your life, for the, for the problems that you have. Right? And as you enjoy these prayers 24 hours, then what comes is the uh, the consciousness of the spiritual soldier. Consciousness of the spiritual soldier. Why? Because you are spiritually very alert through the prayers, right? And what I mean by the consciousness as a spiritual soldier is you need to see the world correctly. Like everyone out there, including the entire world, is actually fighting the physical fight instead of the spiritual fight, right? They are fighting the physical fight. Meaning, they are only concerned for themselves. They're only concerned about their own profit, right? They're only concerned about their success. Meaning, they are caught up with Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11. Yeah, this is the consciousness that you need to see when you look at the field and the world. They don't even know. These are the strategies of Satan, the 6, 3, and 11. And these are the strategies of Satan bringing all the people into eternal destructions, right? But they think they are profitable. They are really helpful for themselves. That's how Satan deceives them. Right? to fight for the physical things 
instead of fighting the spiritual fight. However, we who are conscious of the fact that we are spiritual soldiers have to fight the spiritual fight against Satan, who is the main culprit of the problem of Genesis chapter 3. Right? Our fight is a spiritual fight. If you know that behind that person, behind this situation, there is a main culprit who is the devil, Satan, controlling them, controlling the situation, you won't be deceived by your own emotions. You won't be deceived by these people. right? You won't be deceived by the problems that you face right now. Why? Because you know the spiritual fact. And you know that I have to fight the spiritual fight against my eternal enemy, Satan. Right? And in order to have the consciousness of the spiritual soldier, in, in order to not be deceived and take our stand against the devil's schemes, we need to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty powers. Right? You need to be strong in the Lord. Not strong in your money. Not being strong in your success. You need to be strong in the Lord. Right? You need to be strong in the Lord. And His mighty power. In other words, this mighty power is the power of the throne that has already been given to all the children of God. Mighty power. And Pastor Jung told us, how can we be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power? By restoring, by enjoying three two days. Three two days. By enjoying three two days. What are the three two days? The today, today's word, today's prayer, and today's evangelism. And these three today actually represents the working of the triune God. Why? The God the Father fulfills the word, right? And God the Son actually answers our prayer when we pray in His name. And God the Holy Spirit actually carries out the work of salvation in the field, right? So if you truly enjoy the three todays, you are actually enjoying the power of the tri triune God, right? And that is how you can be strong in the Lord, how you can be really strong in His mighty power, in His mighty power. And in order to realistically fight the spiritual fight, you need to arm yourself spiritually arm yourself. How can I how can I arm myself with the whole armor of God? Right? The only way to have victory in the spiritual fight is to arm yourself. With God's whole armor. And let me briefly go over the specific things of the whole armor. The first is, let me go from the head to the down. It's the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Meaning, you have to be filled with the thanksgiving of salvation. Why? First John chapter 5, if you have Jesus, you have eternal life. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you have eternal life, right? So, meaning you have to have the assurance of salvation every time you give worship, right? When you lose hold of this assurance, that is when Satan attacks you. But even though you're weak, even though you may make mistakes as you live your life, don't forget that you have the eternal blessing of salvation, right? Your spiritual identity as a child of God. Spiritual identity as a child of God. And the second part of the whole armor is the breastplate. Breast. Breastplate, right? Even though you may make mistakes and become weak from time to time, if you are in Christ, you are a new creation and there is no such condemnation. Why? Because you become righteous before God, because you have the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 2, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You should have this assurance. Yes, of course I am weak, I'm lacking, I may make, I may make mistakes, 
from time to time. But Christ has finished everything. In Christ, I am a new creation. I no longer belong to the devil. I am a child of God. You need to have this conviction, this assurance every time you live life. And the third thing of the armor is the belt of truth. Meaning, you need to receive new grace that God gives every single day. New grace. It's not about the grace that you receive from the past. You need to receive th the grace that God gives you every single day. That is how you can hold your life tight in the Word of God. Belt of truth, right? You need to receive the new grace that God gives. So if you look at Hebrew chapter 4, verse 16, God gives you the new grace every single day. You need to restore this. And the fourth part is the boot, the shoes of the gospel of peace, right? Because Jesus, who has overcome the world, has given you the peace that the world cannot give. So you can become a peacemaker by proclaiming the gospel to the dying field. If you look at John chapter 14, verse 26, this peace that I give you is, is, not, is different from the peace that the world gives. This peace cannot be given by the world. This peace can only be given by Jesus Christ. And that Christ is within you. And you are a spiritual peacemaker by proclaiming this good news of Jesus Christ to those who are suffering, to those who are dying without knowing this gospel. Right? That's what it means to become a peacemaker. It's not about, it's not about meeting people like having meals together, of course, that is also making peacemaker. But what I'm talking about is, you are a spiritual peacemaker, right? Bringing that person, making that person, crossing over from death to life, right? From darkness to light. That's what it means to become a spiritual peacemaker. And the fifth part is the shield. You need to block Satan's attack, right? How can you block Satan's attack? By choosing faith over unbelief every time, right? Whenever you're faced with certain problems that you might fall into disbelief, but you need to choose faith over unbelief. That's how you can block Satan's attack. Every time, whether good or bad, whether good situation or bad situation, you need to choose faith over unbelief. You need to choose faith over unbelief that, so that Satan cannot attack you. That's how you can block yourself from the attacks, right? Flaming arrows of the, uh, Satan's attack. That is how you can block yourself, shield yourself, right? And if you look at Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, right? Faith, what you need to believe is that the triune God, unseen through our eyes, is with you always. That's what you need to believe in. That's what you need to trust in. Right? The triune God is actually with me right now. Whether I go to my place, whether I go to go home, whether I meet somebody, doesn't matter. Because triune God can transcend time and space. He is everywhere, right? So you need to have this assurance. And Sixth, last part is the sword of the spirit. This is the only weapon that you can fight against with Satan, right? This is the only attacking weapon that God has given to you. This is the word of God, right? Sword. Why do you have to hold on to this covenant from the word? Why do you come to church and receive the word from God? It is because if you look at Hebrew chapter 14, 4, verse 12, right? The word that is living and active, right? It is sharper than any double-edged sword, can penetrate even to your soul, your mind, your thoughts, and every attitude and thinking of your heart, right? So if you look at Joshua, chapter 1, verse 7 through 8, yeah, God gives his word to the next leader, Joshua, after Moses passed away, right? He said, if you obey and meditate on the word day and night, 
What happens is that you will be prosperous and be victorious. Successful, right? If you meditate on the word, if you meditate on the word day and night, that's how you can be successful. That's how you can actually attack Satan's strategy. Really, you can break down Satan's strategy. So I want all of you here truly wear the whole armor of God by holding on to this covenant, right? And going deeper into the prayer that connects with the throne. That's how you can be victorious in the spiritual battle. The spiritual battle. And going into our main content, the reason why we have to build the ark is because the field that we are living in now is just like the age of Noah. Right? The age of Noah. And if you and from today's scripture reading, the Nephilim came upon the age. The Nephilim. The Nephilim is not Korean nor English. It is actually a Hebrew word that means falling from above. What fell from above? It is the Satan, our enemy, right? Meaning the age of Noah was filled with the Nephilim, meaning Satan was taking control of the entire age of Noah. And even now, the world we are, that we are living in is also being seized by our eternal enemy, Satan, right? The Nephilim. As a result, because Satan is taking control of our field, the world, the field has turned into what? The field of Genesis chapter 3. It has turned into the field of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Why? Because Satan makes everyone to become me-centered. Every, every time they choose something, every time they go something, every time they decide something, they try to be me-centered. Me-centered. Not needing God. I don't need God. I am sufficient with myself. That's how Satan makes you to think. Like, try to be yourself. Right? There is another hero within yourself. Right? There is a different hero that you need to awaken. That's how Satan tries to deceive you. So that they think that, oh, I don't need God in my life. That is the field that we are living in. Right? And also, the age that we are living in, it has turned into the field of Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. People chase after money. People kill their family just for getting money. Right? That's how crazy people are right now. They are actually slaves of money. Right? Instead of, instead of taking control of money, they're actually being controlled by money. Right? Money, money, money. Yeah, for the money, they kill anybody. Nothing becomes a problem. If I can get this money, right? That's how crazy this world has become. Why? The Satan has taken control of everything. Satan. And this field that we are living in has turned into the field of Genesis chapter 11. Right? Build the Tower of Babel, right? Rebelling against God. We don't need God. With, my, with our own strength, we can build the mighty tower. But what happened to that tower? Tower of Babel? crushed it fell down right so satan makes people to chase after success all i need is success all i need is money all i need is fame but I, what happened to all the celebrities out there what happened to all the politicians out there if you look at the media there are a lot of celebrities who have money success they commit suicide right they kill themselves why? Because those are not the true happiness. The true happiness is meeting God through Jesus Christ. Amen. And you guys have to build the ark so that they can truly realize the true happiness that I can receive is from restoring the relationship with God by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. That is why you need to build this spiritual ark in your respective field. Amen. And let's move over here. So if you correctly analyze the field that you're living in, what you need to open up is the three, three kinds of eyes. You need to open up three, three, 
three kind, three kinds of eyes to see the field. And the first type of eyes is rightfulness. What I mean by rightfulness is that the problem of Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11, which are Satan's strategies, is eternal. It's happening even right now. And those, every single one who is within this problem, will rightfully face eternal destruction. You need to be able to see this. You need to have these eyes of rightfulness. Yeah, everyone who has been separated from God can never be happy. You need to open their eyes. Everyone who is without God has no choice but to rightfully receive destructions, disasters. You need to open up these eyes. And the second type of eyes you need to open is the eyes of necessity. Necessity, right? Even yesterday, there was a meeting with the officers. And one of the officers told us, like, there are a lot of uh, multi-ethnic people coming to our ministry because they, they need something, right? And we need to open up our eyes to see their needs, right? And this is the same thing. If you look at the field spiritually, you know what they need, right? You need to open up these eyes of necessity, what they need. They don't need money. They don't need success. What do they need? They need true, success, true happiness inside Jesus Christ, right? There is no condemnation at all if you truly meet God through Jesus Christ, and you need to open up these eyes of necessity, right? It is knowing what kind of covenant and prayer are necessary for you to hold on to in order to save the field. It is knowing the covenant that is necessary for you to hold on to to save the field. And knowing this covenant is actually your walk of faith. That is why you come to worship. That is why you are, we are united in this ministry. That is why we come to every single Sunday to give worship. Why? To truly seek out the covenant that God wants us to hold on to, to save this age, right? So you need to truly open up these eyes of necessity. And the third type of eyes is the absoluteness. We are not gathered here just to do something to do, right? We are here as a Yewon's English ministry to do the absolutely necessary, absolutely needed for the world, for two, three, seven nations and 5,000 people groups, right? That is why God has called us even before creation to do this absolutely necessary, absolutely needed things for expanding the kingdom of God. And as we keep asking and seek out the covenant in each worship, then what happens is that you will come to realize what you absolutely have to do, right? Which is called the heavenly mandate. Even now, you need to ask God right now. As you give worship, you need to ask God in your mind. Lord, what is the covenant that you want me to hold on to? What is the heavenly mandate that you want me to carry out in my life? You need to constantly ask this question, right? To open up these three eyes, the eyes of rightfulness. Everyone without God has no choice but to face eternal destructions and disasters, right? The eyes of necessity. What do they need? They need the gospel. And what is the absolutely necessary thing that I need to carry out? That should be your permanent mission, heavenly mission that you hold on to, heavenly mission. And if you truly know the field, and if you truly open up the three kinds of eyes, then what happens is that that is when you can become the evangelist. Evangelist. Right? Who builds the ark and block the disasters of this age? Right? You guys are the evangelists. God has called you as an evangelist. Right? And if you look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 8 through 9, yeah, you can see the characteristics of an evangelist. 
It says, Noah was righteous and found favor in the eyes of God. Why? Because he walked faithfully with God. That was the only condition why Noah was righteous before God. Why Noah found favor in the eyes of God. The only condition was he walked faithfully with God. And, and we are about to end year 2022. And we are about to embark on a new journey in year 2023, right? And all we have to do is, what? To be walking faithfully with the Lord, right? To follow the streams of the Lord, right? That is the only characteristic as an evangelist, to be with God, to walk faithfully with God. And through that evangelist, what did God command? God commanded in Genesis chapter 6, verse 14, make yourself an ark, right? He did not say, make an ark for me. Instead of he said, make yourself an ark, right? And if you look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 18, it says, make an ark for your children. Make an ark for your descendants. So if you truly build this spiritual ark, if you truly restore the word movement, life movement in your respective fields, that means you are doing that precious movement for yourself, for your children. And if you look at the last verse, Genesis chapter 6, verse 20, it says, make an ark for every kind of creature. Meaning, if you truly restore the life movement, the word movement, evangelism movement in your life, what means is that, that life movement will save yourself. That evangelism movement will save your children. And that evangelism movement will save the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. That is why God commanded Noah to build the ark. Right? And all of you here, I truly pray that you guys should make, you guys should build the spiritual ark so that anybody can come in and listen to this precious gospel and become a precious child of God, crossing over from death to life. Amen? And as a conclusion, uh, if you look at Luke chapter 17, verse 26, 27, it is recorded like this. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day of Noah, entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Right? And we are living this kind of age. Of course, the flood is coming. The disasters are coming. The disasters are impending. But they are... They, are unaware of this fact. They're just eating, drinking, getting married, and doing all the physical things. But what happened at the end? They were completely destroyed. However, for those who went into this ark, who went inside of this ark, who truly believed this covenant that God has given to us, were all saved, right? And we have to know this age and truly build this ark, right? Before this impending disaster comes and eat up all our all the people in the field. So, in order to do this, we need to restore the three systems. The first one is is the alone system. What I mean by you need to restore the alone system is, as you can see, Noah built the ark by himself, right? Meaning, you need to restore the spiritual system where you can hold on to and meditate on the word on yourself. Whether you are with somebody, whether you are by yourself, it doesn't matter. You need to have this alone system. Right? right? A lot of people, they try to resort to people right? when they want to comfort themselves. When they feel lonely, right? they try to go out, they hang out with their friends. Right? That's how they can comfort themselves. But as a spiritual soldier... As the evangelist who will build the ark, you need to restore the alone system. 
alone, the spiritual system, where you can look upon God, where you can meditate on the Word by yourself, where you can go deeper into prayer without any help from others. Right? That's what it means you can become spiritual soldier and spiritually independent to your alone system. May you truly restore this system. And the second system that you need to restore is the concentration system. Right? Concentrate. Concentrate. Why? Because Noah concentrated on building the ark. Why did he do that? Because he knew that it was the covenant that was given to him. That is why he concentrated on this covenant. But there are so many Christians, when they come to church, they do not concentrate on the covenant. They only concentrate on people. They concentrate on the things of the world. They concentrate on the atmosphere of this church, right? But for you and us, we have to restore the concentration system to truly concentrate on the things of God, right? Noah, regardless of people's mocking and slander, that, that, that didn't matter, right? right? Because the only thing that mattered to him was fulfilling this covenant by building the ark. That was the only thing that he concentrated on. So may you truly, every time you come to worship, you may meet somebody, right? You may meet your friends, but only the Word of God should be the only thing that you need to concentrate on, right? You need to restore this concentration system. And the third system that you need to restore is the continuation system, continuation, right? There are a lot of people who start something, but at some point, they just disappear. I don't know where they are. Right? Oh, oh, pastor, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But at some point, they just disappear. Right? But for Noah, he built the ark for how many years? For 120 years. That's how long he continued to fulfill this covenant. Right? Right? Noah built the ark for 120 years. That's how long he continued to fulfill God-given covenant. Right? Even if answers do not come right away, you continue to hold on to the covenant because that covenant will be fulfilled at whose time? At God's perfect time schedule. So may you truly hold on to this covenant and restore the continuation system in your life. Amen? All right, let us pray. Father God, thank you for calling us the ones who re remained in this age to restore the ark movement to save two, three, seven nations and 5,000 people groups. May we carefully, correctly see the fields that are suffering from the problems of Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11 and proclaim the accurate gospel that is rightfully and necessarily and absolutely needed in the field. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.